He was forced out of office two years ago, but Pervez Musharraf is now seeking a comeback within the turbulent world of Pakistani politics. It certainly won't be an easy journey, so what are his chances of returning to power? This is Inside Story. Hello and a warm welcome to the programme. I'm Laura Kyle. So in London on Friday, Pervez Musharraf launched a new political party. He's called it the All Pakistan Muslim League. As he did so, he also apologised for what he called his negative actions of the past and said he's now ready to lead Pakistan once again. Musharraf first seized power in a bloodless military coup in 1999. Nine years later, he stepped down when his allies lost the 2008 general elections. The new government threatened to impeach him, forcing him to flee and live in self-imposed exile in London, where he's been ever since. But with that government now being criticised for its poor response to the recent devastating floods, Musharraf is stepping up to provide the alternative he says the people of Pakistan are seeking. Today, the political alternatives visible in Pakistan do not show any signs of light in the darkness that prevails in Pakistan. I think I can give that light. And I want to give that light to Pakistan. So plenty to discuss here today. And to help us do it in Islamabad, Ahmed Raza Kasuri, former legal advisor to Pervez Musharraf, also in Islamabad, author and political analyst, Imtiaz Gul. Thank you very much for being here, Ahmed Raza Kusari. If I could start with you, Musharraf wants to give the light back to Pakistan. He's calling himself the saviour of the nation. What exactly can he offer? See, the position is that uh, after 18th of February <coughs> 2008, the people of Pakistan inducted uh, a democratic forces through a general election. And the democratic forces are running the country from last two and a half years. But unfortunately, their performance has been miserable, and they have not been able to deliver the goods to the people of Pakistan. The economy is in shambles. The law and order is dwindling. And their uh, own... Uh, 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 credibility deficit is so obvious that although the international world is all out to save Pakistan and to help Pakistan uh, after this uh, uh, devastating floods, but because of the credibility deficit, How exactly nobody is, is coming forward. expecting to solve these problems? Now, now the position is that with the comparison of two and a half years. Uh, in power of the democratic forces and nine years regime of the General Pervez Musharraf, when they compare, they find the difference. Uh, as far as the economy is concerned, there were, it was a better economy during General Musharraf's time. The, 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 the prices of the day-to-day -day goods were reachable to the common man. And uh, the, our, it, our foreign reserves were almost up to $17 billion. Okay, that was so then. We What's he going to do now? Well, he is now going to uh, people of Pakistan through his political party, which has been established and has been registered uh, with the Election Commission of Pakistan. And uh, we have uh, all over the country our uh, uh, offices are operative and we are recruiting a large number of people from all uh, cross section and basically the sits the silent majority which is almost comes to 60 to 65 percent uh, population of Pakistan they are all out to support Jana Musharraf when by comparing these two regime they feel that Jana Musharraf regime was head and shoulder above that was a period where when people thought it was like like a heaven as okay. compared to the hell today so okay, that is the motivation. If I can bring in MTR's girl at the moment, because we still haven't exactly political divide, heard what Musharraf is planning political to void do. And uh, leadership crisis in the country. MTR's girl, do you think that Musharraf can be the saviour of Pakistan? Well, uh, I think uh, General Pervez Musharraf has uh, lost his relevance to the current day Paki Pakistan. He had enough time, I think, eight to nine years, where wherein he ruled Pakistan 
uh, unquestioned by the international community. And uh, whatever problems Pakistan is facing today, I think is the accumulative legacy, not only of uh, uh, Musharraf, but also of the previous military regimes. Uh, I think before uh, he starts campaigning and returns to Pakistan to head his All Pakistan Muslim League, there are a few fundamental legal constitutional questions that uh, Mr. Musharraf and his uh, allies have to uh, answer. I think the very fundamental question would be uh, how do you deal with a person who subverted and violated the Constitution twice uh, during his rule, once in uh, 1999 and then again in 2007 when he imposed uh, the state of emergency, which was turned upside down, obviously, by the Supreme Court, and then he suspended the Supreme Court itself. So I think it's not uh, uh, going to be a rosy field for President Musharraf, but uh, I think it will be a very, very thorny uh, pilgrimage, thorny journey for him if he at all uh, decided to return to Pakistan. Okay, let's look a little bit at this uh, party that he's formed, the All Pakistan Muslim League Party. Uh, we don't know much or anything really about this. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear from Ahmad Raza Kasuri to find out a bit more about it. You see, the position is that, uh, as I said, that uh, his call is towards uh, the silent majority which is in a large number, they are neither committed to A party nor to the B party. They are only committed to the solidarity and the integrity of the country. And these parties have utterly failed. And particularly the floods, uh, recent floods in Pakistan, have washed away the political parties, the political leadership, the political issues, and they have been taken, uh, rolled into uh, the Arabian Sea. Now, there is no visibility of any government. And uh, in this kind of a void and a, and a leadership crisis, I think uh, General Musharraf uh, with his uh, uh, All Pakistan Muslim League is going to fill it up that uh, void and uh, provide the, the relevant kind of a leadership which will probably lead Pakistan to prosperity and to the economic health. See. This silent majority, who are they? Well, silent majority is the one uh, which never turns up to vote because they feel that a, 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 a one uh, thief is contesting against another thief and they do not participate. You see, because uh, a large number of people uh, of Pakistan, when the election takes place, don't turn up. And they don't turn up because uh, they uh, show their negative uh, stance because they feel that both sides have nothing to offer. So they stay away. That is the silent majority that we are going to inspire. And once we inspire that, that uh, silent majority, which is uh, very sizable in this country, as I said, it, it, is, it comes to about 60 to 65 percent of the Pakistan population. Once that silent majority is provided a right kind of a, a dynamic leadership, which promises them integrity, solidarity, and the well-being of the country, I'm sure the people of Pakistan are going to follow that leader. Mr. Gul, can Musharraf galvanize this silent majority to go to the polls? Well, I think well, uh, I'll uh, take it uh, with a big pinch of salt. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, the, Mr. <coughs> Musharraf has had his, uh, his role in the politics, and I really don't think that he would be able to galvanize. I agreed that uh, they are governance problems, there is deficit problem, nobody, there are hardly anybody who trusts uh, the, the government being led by Mr. Zardari and Mr. Gilani. Uh, they are very serious issues. But I guess that had they been, had Pervez Musharraf still been the head of the government uh, and had we seen, had Pakistan seen the same uh, deluge that uh, uh, we witnessed in the month of August, I don't think the response would have been different either, just because uh, Pakistan's uh, governance structures have been very feeble, very fragmented, and very personality-driven rather than institutional-driven. So I think these are the problems that, that have accumulated over the past 30 to 40 years, and I don't think that uh, uh, a person like Parvez Musharraf would alone be able to overcome them. I think what we need is a political reform. What we need is political continuity, uh, not by the people, discredited people such as Parvez Musharraf, but by probably new leadership, which I think only a continued political process can throw up. 
Uh, you did say, though, that there is no doubt that Pakistanis are unhappy uh, with the performance of Zadari's party. So there is a void to be filled. Uh, is this not then the right time, if any, for Mush Musharraf to stage a comeback? Well, I think for that he shall have to really uh, test waters be by coming back to Pakistan. And I, I would say that the moment Mr. Musharraf lands in Pakistan, he would be swarmed by problems. He would have to confront a number of enemies. Number one is the Supreme Court, the judges who had to sit it out for several months under Parvez Musharraf. Number two would be, I think, the Muslim League being led by uh, former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Uh, and I think uh, uh, People's Party is also uh, not an ally of Parvez Musharraf. So I think he will have to really uh, do a very, very tight rope walking. And I wouldn't be surprised he really, uh, that if he at all turns up in Pakistan. I mean, uh, I really, it would be very, very unfortunate for Pakistan, for this aggrieved nation, which has suffered already three dictators, including uh, Parvez Musharraf, to see him and welcome him back. I mean, that will be a really twist of turn and twist of destiny for this country. It certainly would be a difficult path back into politics. Let's look a little bit more at that. Uh, Pakistani uh, landscape proving rather tricky at the moment. While Musharraf may have some virtual support via social networking sites like Facebook, as we've heard, his popularity on the ground is clearly a matter of debate. A largely anti-U.S. public widely perceives Musharraf as Washington's stooge in fighting extremism and leaving behind a bloody legacy. His popularity has especially declined in his final year in power in 2007 when he fired the chief justice and imposed a state of emergency. His current influence over his former power base, that is the military, is as yet unclear. If he returns, he could face legal charges, as we've just been hearing, for his actions whilst in power, whether they be politically motivated or otherwise. And crucially, he risks assassination. British intelligence agencies warning that he is at risk. Well, there is plenty stacked against him. One thing we haven't properly touched on yet, a very crucial element, is the army. Mr. Kasuri, what support does Musharraf enjoy from the army? You see, he's a former army chief, and uh, uh, most of the corps commanders uh, were promoted uh, by him when he was the army chief. And uh, army is the one extended clan. You see, uh, uh, they have got uh, see, comradeship and they look after each other. I mean, one example is that Yahya Khan, uh, who was uh, responsible for the breakup of this country in 1971, and Bhutto emerged as a very powerful, uh, uh, popular leader. But with all that popularity and the support that he had from the people of Pakistan, he was not able to bring uh, General Yahya uh, 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 at, the, at the bar of the court. Because army in the, in the underdeveloped country is a very powerful uh, instrument of power. And uh, r these political uh, uh, entities, they virtually lean and bank to stay in power on the armed force of Pakistan. Even now, you, you see all these top delegation which comes to Pakistan. See, after visiting Islamabad, they go to GHQ. And the real discussion takes place at GHQ because they feel this is the real power. So therefore, uh, I can assure you this is all cock and bull story. Nothing will happen. Nobody will come even near uh, General uh, Musharraf uh, once he returns back to the country. And uh, I can assure you that in coming days when he'll come back, he will lead uh, very vigorously this uh, silent majority and then many people seeing his popularity will jump on the bandwagon. Okay, Mr. Gould, I can see by your face that you uh, may well disagree with that. Well, I mean, uh, I think uh, Parvez Musharraf and his supporters inside Pakistan uh, uh, probably are being a little wishful, I would say. As I said earlier, the, it will be really, really unfortunate if Parvez Musharraf were to come and the army, his parent institution, would to lap him up. I think uh, the army, it has taken uh, quite, quite, uh, quite some time, two to three years, for the army to rehabilitate its image, the image that had been badly battered under, under Musharraf. And uh, the army high command, I, I, I don't think, would uh, 
like to discredit itself and uh, squander the good image that it has uh, built for itself uh, the last two years, particularly in the flood relief efforts. So if uh, Mr. Musharraf is banking on the army, then uh, again, I think they are, uh, he is betting uh, on, a, on a wrong horse because this horse itself, I think, is surrounded by so many problems that it wouldn't like to add uh, another big liability to itself by just uh, pr uh, providing uh, the, the requisite attention and importance to a person uh, who has had played his innings and uh, I think who would be better, who would better be um, staying on in, in London. Well, Musharraf did have a point when he said that the Pakistani people uh, did not tend to trust politicians, that they did trust more the army. And it would appear that the recent devastating floods have proved that. So he may have a, he may have a point in, in, in wanting the army to back him. Well, politicians or uh, would-be politicians have uh, all the right to say whatever they like. They will always uh, like uh, to say what they, they think uh, would galvanize, would influence the people. But I think uh, uh, the reality, ground reality, is quite different. And uh, uh, given the current situation, uh, fine, there is uh, the, the peop people are not happy with the government. People are, uh, are having problems. The economy is, is really in a bad shape. Uh, but that really doesn't provide any justification for a former military dictator to return to the country and uh, start playing harping on the themes that people would like to listen. I think they have had, they have heard enough, uh, beginning in the late 60s from Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, then from Ziaul Haq, from uh, on to Benazir Bhutto and uh, Nawaz Sharif. They also heard a lot from Parvez Musharraf himself. So I think uh, it's about time that the people of Pakistan. Uh, got some new leadership, which I still believe would come through the electoral process, not through any manip manipulation of the democratic process. Mr. Kasuri, is it not true that many of Musharraf's uh, army allies are retired anyway? See, the position is that uh, my friend uh, speaking uh, to you, he should realize that uh, he is coming through a democratic process. Doesn't uh, a retired journal or a retired civil servant after his retirement has a right to participate in the national politics? The only check is that he has to wait for two years, that he has waited. And two years uh, elapsed sometime in November 2009. And now he is under the Constitution, qualified. So he's coming democratically. We have the example of uh, Charles de Gaulle, who was a journal, but he came through through a democratic process and became most powerful politician that France has ever produced. We have the example of Eisenhower, who was a five-star general in the United States of America, and he came through a democratic process and emerged as one of the most uh, 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 powerful president of the United States. So, General Musharraf is certainly looking for that kind of a path. He's going to be either de Gaulle or Eisenhower of Pakistan, and he's going to come through a democratic process. Why people are so scared? Why people are so jumping, you see? I mean, that shows their fear. They are, they are being threatened because they feel that he is, is, is making ground. And to be very honest about it, uh, there's a phrase in the English language, nobody kicks a dead horse. The way people are uh, criticizing and uh, coming out with a most uh, venomous uh, 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 criticism against him, that itself is an indication of the fact that they are being threatened and they are aware that all these hoax and all these jokers who have come in the name of uh, democracy, because democracy in a country like Pakistan is a government by the illiterate, for the illiterate, of the illiterate. And it has given no strength to this country. It has given a deprivation. It has given uh, the law and order situation. It has given poverty to the people. It has given corruption. And okay, these okay. politicians Gould, are dishonest uh, to the hilt. It is a fair point there, there is it not, that right? Musharraf is entering a democratic process? Well, well I think uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Kusuri, Mr. Kusuri is trying to draw a parallel between Eisenhower, uh, Shaldi Gal. Uh, I don't think that's a fair uh, comparison because Charles de Gaulle or Eisenhower were not tainted. They were not stigmatized for having uh, staged coups, coup d'etats in the country. They did not, had not violated uh, the constitution. Uh, here in the case of Mr. Musharraf, I think uh, he does have a very, very negative baggage. And I'm sure, I'm 200% uh, sure the, the moment he returns, I think 
uh, the, the first test, uh, the first question he shall have to face would be the, I think, the uh, Article 6, charges against Article 6 of the Constitution, uh, charging him with treason, and treason means when a violation of the Constitution. So I think uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, 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 the real test would come only when he comes, returns to, the, to Pakistan and then starts uh, playing his role as, as politician in this country. We'll see. I, I think we should, rather than uh, sticking to the past and uh, conjecturing as to whether he, he would be a success, let him come back and uh, test the field here. And I think uh, he would, he would uh, stand exposed very soon, I would say. And also he does, ex does stand exposed to enormous risk. I mean, we mustn't forget that there is a huge risk of assassination. And Mr. Kasuri, is he taking that into consideration? Well, uh, 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 when we will uh, ask him to come back, we will take care of his uh, security problem. And let me uh, answer Imtiaz that uh, Zulfkarli Bhutto was a dismissed uh, uh, ex uh, Foreign Minister of a Dictator, Ayub Khan. Ah. He was uh, brought up and reared up and geared up by a dictator. And once he realized that there was a void in 66 onward, he filled up that void and provided the leadership. And I was, uh, you know, very close to him. And in fact, People's Party got his birth from my home. I was the man who made a Bhutto a Bhutto. I was a very powerful uh, youth leader in the country. I see that similar kind of a situation. I'm not talking on, on bookish knowledge of the, of the politics. I'm talking on the basis of experience because I'm a one politician who has put in about 47 years in the public life. I, I have led many movements. So I see similar kind of a situation as Zulfkali Bhutto got after when Ayub Khan was diminishing and he took advantage of that situation and there were no prominent person with him in the party. Uh, actually, the, all the prominent party would say, who is, with, who is with you? And he has none. But those people who had no introduction in 1970 election, they defeated all uh, sundry, all big names, and they, they were identified as the leader of the new leadership of the country. I see a similar kind of a situation repeating. Okay, Mr. Gull, the final word to you. If not Musharraf to take power in, over the future of Pakistan, then whom? Let the, the, the democratic process must continue and the continuity of the process, I think, will throw up uh, new leaders. Uh, I would, I would as, a, as a democratic Pakistani, as a member of the civil society, would wish that we simply move forward, move on with the current dispensation. There will always be allegations of corruption. There will be always misgovernance. But I think the process itself provides a guarantee for the cleansing uh, of the of the system for the consolidation of uh, the democratic process. Uh, I, I, I don't wish any sort of manipulation, any people associated with, a, uh, with, with Pakistan's politics who have a tainted past, regardless whether they are politicians, whether they are generals, or from any other strata of life. Okay, and there we will leave it in Islamabad. Author and political analyst Imtiaz Gul, and also in Islamabad, Ahmed Raza Kasuri, former legal advisor to Pervez Musharraf. Thank you both very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. And thanks to you for joining us here on Inside Story. If you want to get involved in the discussion, just drop us an email to insidestory at aljazeera.net. See you next time.